Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a really interesting disc that I was playing around with recently that I thought I'd tell you about. It's the Schubert Quintet, the great quintet D960. I'm cutting in here. I decided to cut in. No, it, the, the quintet isn't D960. It's 956. Sorry, the piano sonata is D960. I know you're going to kill me. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Thank you. Um, or Opus 163 in this case, performed by String Orchestra, done by Larger Forces. It's arranged by Dahlia Atlas. And although it doesn't tell you who's playing it, if you look inside here, you find out it is the Atlas Camerata, her Israeli chamber orchestra. And this is really fun. My goodness, I've often wondered about this piece as, you know, how it would sound for string orchestra because it's so rich. You know, it has such a big, big sound, particularly in the scherzo, where they're all playing in like double and triple stops all the time. And it's hunting music, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. They're like horn calls being imitated by the strings. And so I thought, well, this would sound nice if you beefed it up a little bit. And that's exactly what she did. Now, this arrangement is actually rather sensitively done. Um, it has, she leaves intimate moments to the solo strings. In fact, the very opening of the work is quite successful. It begins the way the work begins, you know, basically with solo string timbres. And then gradually, as the introduction moves toward the allegro, the full string ensemble comes in. And then it's, it's, it's very, very, very effective. The slow movement is probably the movement that has, you know, the biggest, the biggest issues with her being arranged for larger orchestra because it's such an intimate piece. I, it really is. It's one of those, it's ethereal and and sublime and transcendental and all of those things. And for some reason, you know, transcendentalosity and, and, and etherealiciousness always sound more effective on solo strings, maybe because, because they can speak more personally, because they can vary their vibrato, because they can really adjust their timbre. So I, I really, you know, kind of prefer the slow movement, the way Schubert wrote it. Well, I prefer the whole work the way Schubert wrote it. That's not really the point. The point is to see what we, what we, what more we get out of it, to emphasize different qualities of it. And in, in the more, you know, violent outbursts in the slow movement, of which there are not many, um, the full ensemble, of course, sounds quite fine. And she does, like I said, thin out the textures necessarily. But this is a very, very, um, a, 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 a very, uh, measured performance of that movement. It's over 16 minutes long. It's the longest movement in the whole work. Um, you know, the first movement doesn't have an exposition repeat. It's 15 minutes. And the finale doesn't either. And I think it could use one um, so that it's not a little bit shorter than the scherzo, which has its repeats. But, you know, yeah, you know, we, we can talk about that when we compare millions of recordings of the original version, since this is kind of sui generis. We have to sort of leave it for what it is. And this scherzo does sound great, I will say. I never want it to end. With the extra strings, holy mackerel. That's exactly what I want it to sound like. Quite often in performances with the, with the original quintet, um, they sound a little thin. They sound like they don't have the, the body, the sonority that the music seems to demand. They can do it. You know, when the Alban Berg Quartet did it with, with, with Heinrich Schiff, wow, that sounded fabulous. And nobody, I think, has quite matched their particular range of sonority and, and power in the scherzo. I just love this scherzo. I think it's one of the all-time great <laughs> movements of its type that anybody ever wrote. It's phenomenal. And it has so much force and thrust in this performance as you, for the full body of strings just, just going for it. It's tremendous. The finale, the finale is, I think, the biggest issue. The finale is so often the biggest issue. I, it sounds lovely. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think finally, by the time we get to the very end, we begin to feel that the arrangement for a string ensemble is just a touch heavy handed. You know, it, it tends to bog down a little bit. It's not that Atlas isn't a fine conductor. She has a very good conception of the piece, and it is, after all, her own work. So she knows what she wants, and she gets what she wants, and it's extremely well recorded. On this, this label, is a, this is such an odd thing. The label is called Carrière, Carrière Classics. And uh, it was recorded in Haifa in 19... 
91, it seems. I mean, I have no idea where this thing came from. I mean, you know, but here it is. But, it, you know, by the time you get through the whole thing, you do begin to feel that, you know, it's almost an hour long that Schubert's original setting has less of a dense, you know, feeling. Gets less, it doesn't bog down as much. And this, this kind of does in spots. There are spots where perhaps a quicker tempo would have been better, or where maybe it's just the, the heaviness of the full string ensemble that begins to weigh heavily on the music itself. Uh, I don't know. I mean, exactly, exactly what the issue is, but there is definitely a bit of an issue, especially if you know the original very, very well. Nonetheless, if you love the Schubert Quintet, and who does not love the Schubert Quintet, this is really worth hearing. I think it's fascinating. Yeah, I really do. And, and it was a very, very welcome surprise. So I'm happy to talk about it and recommend it to you accordingly. Dahlia Atlas, it's called Schubert, The Last Quintet. Well, there weren't that many. I mean, there was the Trout, but that wasn't the same thing as this sort of quintet, and this was the only string quintet he wrote, so it was the only quintet. And here it is, arranged for string ensemble. It's fun. It's just fun, and it's a good time, and a, a fresh take on a well-worn masterpiece. So give it a shot, and keep on listening. Thank you for joining me. Take care.